Hey everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to finally be sharing this video with you guys. It is my Christmas decorate with me and I'm gonna take you through my entire home and show you how I decorate it in real time. This year I tried to keep things really simple, really minimal, but still really impactful and cozy and almost rustic and kind of vintage. I don't know, I feel like everything that I use this year is very classic and will stand the test of time, so it was a good investment. And I tried really hard to keep everything budget friendly, so if you do have any questions about anything, check the description. I know a lot of things are selling out quickly this year, um, and I know not everything is linkable, but if it is, I have listed it in the description box so you guys can still get that high-end designer look on a budget this holiday season. So without further Without further ado, let's get into the decorating. Okay, so first off, we have our entryway, and it's the first thing that you see when you come into our home, so I really wanted it to feel welcoming and cozy, but not too overdone or too over the top. So I decided to do a simple garland draped up the side with large statement ribbons and all of the big thick ribbons that I found online were super expensive. So I decided to check out the scrap fabric section at Walmart where they have a large variety of scraps and you can usually get two yards for about $4, which is a really awesome deal. So I came home with this really pretty light gray chiffon type fabric that I thought would look perfect. And I liked how it was light and airy, so it kind of gave that casual elegance. I loved the simple neutral color of it, so I just kind of laid it out and started cutting strips of it. And I would say each strip was about a foot to a foot and a half in width. Because this was a really thin sheer fabric, I wanted to make sure that it was thick enough to create a statement and give the appearance of a really big bow. So to pair with it, I used these really pretty faux garlands that I got back in October actually online from TJ Maxx. And they're currently out of stock, but I will link some in stock ones below that are really good and realistic as well. I also found these bells at Hobby Lobby for $20 and I did a little paint technique on them to make them look a bit more worn and aged. I show you guys how I did that in my Hobby Lobby Christmas haul, but I figured that this would be perfect to act kind of as an anchor and just add some visual interest at the base of the stairs. So I just tied them on there and tucked the string in so it could easily be covered up by our fabric ribbon. And then I added the first piece of garland and I kind of arranged it in sort of like a curve type shape. So that way it gives the base some really nice pretty movement since this will be an anchor and focal point for the stairs. So then I just tied on the ribbon that I cut and the key to making these really big bows was just to do the ribbon in two parts. So I tied one ribbon on for the bow ends and then another on top for the bow ears. And this just really helps those ribbons to appear super thick and voluminous and just to add that almost hotel-like and elegant feel to them. So once I had the focal post all set up, I just continued stringing the garland all the way up the stairs and I just used the ribbon to connect them and secure them to the railing. And for those of you wondering, the garlands I used were six foot in length, which is pretty standard, and I used four garlands total. So for any of the stubborn pieces that needed extra securing, I just used some pipe cleaner that I had laying around the house. And this just kind of helped tame those loose ends that were kind of sticking out and went all haywire. So once all of that was done, I just went through and gave the garlands one last final fluff to cover any bald spots. And that was really it. So just to tie everything together, I wanted to spruce up our little seating moment that sits below the stairs. So I took away our mini olive tree and moved our little nesting stool in its place. I put a kitchen crock on it that I got at Home Goods, and then just topped it off with this mini burlap Christmas tree that I found at Hobby Lobby. And I just feel like this really completes the entryway and gives it that cozy winterized exclamation point. And I love being greeted by this festive but classic entryway entryway decor every time I or a guest enters our home. So after doing our entryway, I realized that, duh, I couldn't forget about the actual front door area. So I got this super pretty wreath at Target. I actually liked it so much that I bought two and I just popped it right on our front door with a black command strip. And I love how realistic this wreath looks for the price combined with that really cute vintage bell detail. It's definitely one of my favorite pieces that I've picked up for this holiday season. And I just also wanted to give our little entry mat a little refresh. So 
I just took out our old one and swept away some of the fall leaves. And then I wanted to add that cozy layered look. So I got this $4 mat at Ikea. I believe they sell it on Amazon as well for a little bit more if you don't have an Ikea nearby or you just don't wanna deal with the hassle. But then I just laid this cute, simple, happy holidays doormat that I got from Target for only $13 on top. And I just love how clean, simple, and inviting this looks. So next, I just wanted to make our guest bath a little bit more festive since that is also in our entryway and it is the bathroom that everyone uses. So I wanted to replace my photo print for something a little bit more season appropriate. So I just printed a photo that I took in Banff and I made it into a watercolor image using an app and then printed it on some watercolor paper that I cut down to size and put through the printer. If you wanna know how I turned my photo into a watercolor, I do have a mini tutorial in my fall decorate with me video. So make sure to check that out because it's super cheap, easy, and can be a great way to artistically display photos and memories that are meaningful to you. So I also ran out of ink during my first print and I didn't want to waste paper. So that's why there's a weird image on the back, but I really love how this looks and it just adds that subtle wintry feel without being too over the top. And it can honestly stay up throughout the beginning of next year as well. So I really like that. And I just popped a little mini wreath next to it that I found at Hobby Lobby for $4 to finish it off. And I love how just by doing this, it instantly transforms these shelves. Some other little tweaks that I like to do are switching out the soaps and the hand towels just to match the season. And I got this hand soap at TJ Maxx for $4 and a set of two Turkish winter hand towels for $7. So I feel like this really just sets the mood, makes it feel really festive, and it shows that you don't need to spend a lot of money, but just by switching out these small little things, the room already feels refreshed and redone. And then to finish it all off, I just incorporated this kitchen crock that I got at home goods. Crocs are my new go-to for vases just because you can get them for such affordable prices compared to a vase. But I just filled it with these little picks that I got from Hobby Lobby for $4 each. And then I popped a little balsam scented candle next to it to add that spa-like atmosphere. And that is it. Some super duper simple and easy ways to refresh a bathroom for the holidays, which is really nice when you might have some more guests coming through. And it's just nice to make it feel cozy and and festive. So next it's time for the most exciting part, the living room, which obviously means the Christmas tree. So I cleared out the little corner where I decided to put the tree this year and just gave it a nice deep clean with some vacuuming because we have a black lab and she sheds like crazy. So when I can get into a corner to vacuum, I gotta take advantage of it. So the tree that I bought was a seven and a half foot tree and I wanted to elevate it just a little bit. So I took this large basket that I found at Goodwill for only $10 and I put a really heavy planter that I wasn't currently using in the bottom just to prop it up and add some stable support. And then my awesome husband just cut a piece of plywood to size to fit perfectly on top. And then from there was where I put the base of the tree. Now, if you have kids that would pull on the tree or cats that like to climb trees, I wouldn't recommend propping it up like this, but we don't have either of those, so I just figured it would work for us. Now, I've talked about this tree before on my holiday decor haul, and I was super impressed with the quality for the price. This tree was only $150 from Walmart. It came pre-lit, and it honestly reminded me of trees that I've seen at Pottery Barn or Ballard Designs for around $1,000, so you honestly cannot beat it for the price. It was really easy to put together, but I will say that it did require a lot of fluffing to get it to look full, as do most artificial trees, but I found that what worked best was spreading out the tips on the end, and then the branches that were farther back, I just kind of stuck them up in a lot of different directions to kind of help block your view of the trunk of the tree. So overall, I was super impressed with the finished look and I really love how natural and real this tree looks for being faux and for being so cheap. And next, I just wanted to add some cozy, 
woven fabrics to the living room for some added texture. So I layered in this tree skirt that I had from last year. I got it from Home Goods. I believe it was right around $50, but I really feel like this adds such an impact to the overall look. And I'm a huge fan of incorporating large chunky knits during the holiday season. So I feel like it was well worth it. And to keep that texture going, I just added this throw that I got from Target for only $25. It's super cozy to casually layer underneath some throw pillows and visually add some warmth and texture to the space. And you know, chunky cable knit throws tend to be on the pricier side. So I was really excited to find this one for such an affordable price. I also cozied up our reading corner with this textured faux fur throw. I love the warmth and softness this blanket adds to a living area. I would say this is probably my favorite blanket in the house just because of how practical and pretty it is. It's also so soft and comfy, just so, so perfect for winter. So next I decided to add some rustic bell garland to the tree. I found these at Hobby Lobby for $6 a garland and I did a little paint effect on them to make them look old and rustic. If you wanna see how I did that, just go check out my Hobby Lobby Christmas video. But I love the simple vintage look these give to the tree and I'm kind of undecided as to whether or not I'm going to be adding ornaments and ribbon this year. So I figured this was good for now and if I trim the tree a little bit more, I will put that in a later video. But for some reason, I'm just loving that undone simplistic look this year. Now, this room was originally very symmetrical with the centered fireplace, but I kind of offset that with the tree being on one side. So I kind of wanted to continue with that asymmetry to keep things balanced and visually pleasing. So I decided to do an asymmetrical garland detail on my mantle, and this garland was only $25 at Hobby Lobby, and I love how realistic and full it looks. It was super moldable, so it made it easy to just really set and kind of mold right there on the mantle. I didn't really have to do any attaching or anything like that. It definitely fits in with my theme of keeping everything very natural, organic, and kind of like we brought the outdoors inside. So just to add some extra visual interest, I layered in this vintage stool and popped a $5 burlap tree that I found at Hobby Lobby on top. Then I added in this rustic sled that I found at Home Goods, and I really love incorporating warm rustic wooden elements into my holiday decor because the warmth that the wood brings to a space really makes it feel cozy and keeps it feeling very natural and organic. So when decorating the mantle, I just wanted it to look very understated and simple. So I found these stocking hangers that had a really slim profile and kind of just disappeared under the garland, which I really loved the look of. And then I hung a mismatched assortment of chunky cream colored stockings. Two of them were from Home Goods and the other other was from Target and I really love that they don't completely match. This way they give off that found vintage look but still all relate back to each other. And then I just added a set of handmade bells that I bought off of Amber Interiors and I love the contrast of the brassy coppery metal against the chunky soft stockings. I think this mix of materials just adds the perfect amount of visual interest. And then to finish it all off, I just strung one more of my DIY aged bell garlands across the mantle. And this just gives the overall look of the fireplace a bit of extra movement and adds another punch of that contrasting classic brassy material that is so timeless and beautiful. Next, I wanted to add something near the floor of the fireplace on the right hand side. So I found these really pretty birch logs at Home Goods. They were $20 for a set of three and I bought two sets. And I really like how they kind of kept with that theme of bringing the outdoors in and adding a subtle touch of some cozy rustic charm. So I just put this big heavy pot that I DIY'd in a previous video down and just stacked the logs in there. I feel like this kind of keeps the decor feeling very casual but yet purposeful kind of like they are stacked there ready to be thrown in the fire and then to round out the grouping I just added some larger pine picks to make it feel full foraged and fresh
and apparently I'm a big fan of adding cozy knitted textures this season. So to add some subtle style to our coffee table decor, I added these really simple DIY Christmas trees and Newt the Gnome that I made last year in a Christmas DIY video. They were all super easy and cheap to make and I love the subtle cozy texture and warmth that they add. So happy to see that Newt is sitting pretty again this year. So if you wanna know how to make those, definitely go check out that video from last year. So that kind of finishes off the focal point of the living room. I tried really hard to keep this wall balanced with greenery, woods, and fabrics, and I wanted to make it a highlight, but at the same time, keep it really simple and understated. So on the opposing wall, we have our console table, and I just wanted to restyle it a bit to make it pretty and season appropriate, but at the same time, I didn't want it to steal the show. So I just brought in this lamp that I DIY'd, and I also reused this floral arrangement that I made for the fall, but I love that it fits right in with my winter decor as well so the combo of these two pieces balances out the weight of the taller arched mirror on the opposite side and just to spruce that up a bit I topped it off with some more pretty pine picks that I got at Hobby Lobby I believe they were like four bucks each which was super affordable and I like how this pulls in the festive holiday greenery but it's really subtle and isn't too distracting from everything else we have going on in the entire living room and then I just brought in these little concrete houses I got from Hobby Lobby. It was nine bucks total for both of them. And I love that they are festive, but still really simple, clean and neutral. And then I just brought in some candles because they are always a go-to for warming up a space and making it feel cozy during the winter season. And that is it. That's my super simple, easy console table restyle for the holidays. So after doing the living room, I moved on to the kitchen and I just swapped out our tabletop olive tree for a mini Christmas tree. This guy was only $10 from Target and I love the cute little concrete pot that it comes in. And instead of a holiday stem arrangement and a vase, I opted for a really cute tabletop tree to make a statement on our kitchen island. And I just popped it in a little crock that I found at a thrift store. And I love this simple, casual, rustic look this gives to the kitchen. And then to pair with it, I just put some really cute ornaments that I found at Walmart in a vintage wooden bowl. And I love how simple ornament bowl filler is. It's just super easy to customize to your decor or switch out to change up the look if you get bored of it. I have since swapped out these really cute ones for some rusty bell ornaments that I also got from Walmart and I'm having a really hard time deciding which ones to keep. So if you guys have a favorite, let me know in the comments. I love the white clean look but I also just love that rustic kind of lived in aged look of the bells and then to cozy up the look of my countertops I switched out my little white canisters for these really cozy ones I got from McGee & Co I just love the handmade vintage look of them and they are perfect for holding holiday treats coffee fixings or baking ingredients that I'm sure a lot of us have on hand this season and then to finish it all off I just hung this little mini wreath that I got from Hobby Lobby on my utensil rack and I love how these simple subtle changes really cozy up my kitchen and make it ready for the holiday baking season definitely ready to blast some Christmas tunes and fill up those cookie jars. And then lastly, to decorate my dining nook area, I just hung another one of these really cute vintage bell wreaths from Target. I love how it kind of just sits over the window and it draws your eye outside. I think that's so pretty. But as far as a temporary centerpiece goes, I found this really cool vintage amber glass vase at a Christmas market recently. And I added some more holiday stems that I got from Hobby Lobby. I will be doing a Christmas table setup later with some different decor, but this is kind of how I'm going to keep it for now. I know it's not super conducive to, you know, guests and dinner conversations, but I do love how, you know, it acts as a little focal area on this table. And I just love the festivity that both of these elements bring to the table. All right, everyone, so that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you like this video and you are not subscribed, make sure that you are because we have a lot more Christmas decorating content coming. I know it's kind of hard to believe, but there is more. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. And leave me a comment as to what your favorite room was or maybe what your favorite decor item was that I did in this video. I love hearing from you guys. So thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video.
Bye.